Hello, in this video we want to look at multiple myeloma. Okay, multiple myeloma is nothing but the tumor of the bones. As um, the bone has bone marrow, correct? The bone has bone marrow and the bone marrow is called myelo. Okay, bone marrow is myelo. So, and there will be multiple lesions in the skull, in the ribs, here, there, there, there. So, as there are multiple lesions in the bone marrow, it's called as multiple myeloma. What is myelo? Myelo is bone marrow. You understood, no? So, multiple lesions in the bone marrow, multiple myeloma. This is a malignancy actually. So, look at this. Multiple myeloma is a malignant tumor of the bone. Milo means bone marrow. So, basically the bone marrow, what does the bone marrow do? It makes the blood, right? So, it gives the precur the blood uh, cells, that is the WBCs, the, the RBCs, etc. come from where? The platelets, etc. come from bone marrow. The bone marrow is the uh, reticular endothelial system. It is going to make all this blood, correct? So here what happens in this case, the plasma cells will be more, that is the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes, the B lymphocyte especially is nothing but it's going to grow up and become a plasma cell. So in this case, the plasma cells will be more. So there is plasma cell neoplasm. So it is called as plasma cell myeloma. So the plasma cells will be more. Now, there are multifocal involvement of skeleton here, there, 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 everywhere. So that is why it is called as multiple myeloma. Now the cause, uh, it is, uh, it's an important uh, cancer and lot of death, so hence we have to read about it. Now this, uh, again let us look at this, there is malignant proliferation of plasma cells. Plasma cells are what? Nothing but B lymphocytes. So there is malignant proliferation of plasma cells. So lot of plasma cells everywhere in the bone marrow, etc. So these plasma cells, they are all derived from a single clone of cells. So from a single clone of cells, all these plasma cells have come. That is why it's also called as monoclonal proliferation of B cells. Okay. We'll come to all that details. Don't worry. If you didn't understand, it is hem hematopoietic. That is blood making uh, disorder, right? Blood making problem here. Now, multiple myeloma, the etiology. Etiology means why it happens. Basically, sometimes they're saying they don't know why it happens, but they're guessing that it could be because of radiation exposure or, uh, you know, some black. So the ethnicity could matter. Or if the occupation is related to petroleum products, multiple myeloma can happen. Some karyotypic abnormalities that they have noticed. <coughs> the karyotypic abnormalities are translocation of 11, 14, translocation 4, 14. All these could be the causes, etiology. Okay, deletion of 13Q. Okay, all those details if you want you can remember. So karyotypic that is basically the uh, tr chromosome translocation. Correct? T means translocation of 11th chromosome part of it to 14th chromosome. Fourth chromosome, part of it to 14th chromosome, something like that. There's a translocation. So basically, the receiver is 14th chromosome for multiple myeloma. There could be uh, uh, which uh, and oncogenes and anti-oncogenes. The overexpression of MYC and RAS oncogenes. So these uh, RAS and MYC are oncogenes, so they may get overexpressed. There could be mutation of the tumor suppressors like P53 and RB. So basically, these are what P53 and RB are what. They are growth suppressors, so they may get uh, mutated or that means they may actually get suppressed themselves. So they will not be able to suppress the tumors, correct, right? So did you understand this much? Is the etiology clear? Etiology is fine, right? For multiple myeloma. What are we looking at today? Multiple myeloma. We, what and all we saw so far? We saw why it is called multiple myeloma. Now we are looking why it happens, right? Now we will move on to molecular pathogenesis. Molecular pathogenesis means how exactly this happens. Now we know why it happens, why all these people got all this. Now what exactly is happening? Let us look at this. So the myeloma cells, that means the plasma cells, <coughs> plasma cells plus bone marrow stromal cells plus extracellular matrix proteins, they get, they, they adhere. So there's adhesion between these three things. Maybe it'll be better if you look at the diagram and understand. So this is the plasma cell. This is the bone marrow stromal cell. So around plasma cell, what will be there in the bone marrow? Bone marrow stromal cell will be there. Plus the extracellular matrix proteins. These three will get adhesion. So cell adhesion happens. So there is some cell surface adhesion molecules bind to multiple, uh, bind to myeloma cells. They bind the myeloma cells to the bone marrow stromal cells and the extracellular matrix protein, proteins. Basically all these adhere. Now after adhesion what happens? Some signaling happens. Adhesion mediated signaling. Because of this adhesion some signaling is happening. That signaling is going to release a lot of cytokines. Okay. 
Now, these cytokines could be uh, interleukin 1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, lymphotoxin, macrophage inhibitory factor 1, rant ligand, all of these. And then interleukin 6. At least remember interleukin 1 is here and interleukin 6 is here. Okay. So, uh, what happens because of these cytokines which have been released because of the adhesion, correct? Now, what are the uh, cytokines? Just to try to recollect them again. Interleukin 1, tumor necrosis factor alpha, lymphotoxin, macrophage inhibitory factor 1, rant ligand. All these five you have to remember guys. It's better if you write them in the exam. So, all these what they do, uh, they kind of, um, they act like the osteoclast activating factor. So, the they act like the osteoclast activating factor, that's the OAF. Especially <clears throat> these interleukin 1 and all these, right? They will act like um, in osteoclast activating factor, all these in in cytokines actually. All the cytokines act like osteoclast activating factor. So, who and all act like osteoclast activating factor? Interleukin 1, uh, transforming uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, lymphotoxin, Macrophage inhibitory factor uh, 1 alpha, actually MIP1 alpha it is. Then uh, RANT ligand. Actually some details have to be written here more. Wait. So we have added the information here now. So macrophage inhibitory factor 1 alpha, MIF1 alpha and factor kappa B RANK ligand, RANK ligand. What is RAN? Nuclear factor something weight. Okay, we have added that information here. Here you can see. Receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Okay, rank ligand. So, all these are going to do what? They are acting like osteoclast activating factor and hence there will be bone destruction. This is clear. So, did you understand this part of the chart? So, we have finished cytokines and cytokines. We have finished this portion, interleukin 1, etc. So, OAF and bone destruction. This we have finished. Now, let us look at the other cytokines which are getting released like interleukin 6. What interleukin 6 does? The, it activates some cell cycle pathway, cyclin D, P21, everything, some mo modification, something happens. And what happens? A lot of proliferation of these B, uh, uh, B lymphocytes or the plasma cells. The plasma cells nicely they proliferate. So many plasma cells will be there in the bone marrow. And also what will happen? These tumor cells they will survive also. Alright, that is what is important. So many are made and they don't die also. So basically there is cancer now. So this is the malignant tumor of bone. Correct? So you have understood this diagram, right? Okay, shall we move on to the next slide? So molecular pathogenesis we have completed guys. Molecular pathogenesis of multiple myeloma is over. Now we will move on to consequence of tumor of this multiple myeloma. Which tumor don't wonder? Multiple myeloma. The consequences of it. What happens? <coughs> so initially the bone is affected, right? Bone disease is dominating. But after some time, a lot of other things get affected. Lymph nodes, skin, everything will get affected. Even the brain, the the. Um, that the kidney gets affected, the central nervous system get, uh, gets affected, what else gets affected, you know, a lot of things get affected, we'll come to that. Now in bone mainly what and all are affected, you know, the skull, the ribs, the spine, the pelvis, the limbs, then the limbs are affected, okay. Please pay attention to this one here, what and all is affected mainly the skull, the ribs, the spine and the pelvis. Basically these are the things that make a lot of... Uh, uh, they do a lot of erythropoiesis, hematopoiesis. So, these are actually affected which have the red marrow, right? They, then the long uh, bones of limbs get affected. Okay. Now, moving on, what happens? The plasma cells, they make immunoglobulins, right? What is the job of plasma cells? That is the B lymphocytes which became plasma cells. Their job is to make immunoglobulins. Now, there are so many plasma cells, right? So, so many immunoglobulins will be made and that will lead to light chain, lot of light chain proteins, that is amyloid light chain proteins will be formed. So, there will be amyloidosis. Amyloidosis is what? Proteinaceous substance will be deposited. These proteinaceous substance will not, our body cannot dissolve them. Our body cannot 
degrade them. So they will go on depositing and they will be abnormal protein deposit, proteinaceous deposit actually. So AL amyloidosis will be there, aminoglobin light chains will be there. Okay. Uh, chiefly the lambda type they are seeing. Lambda and kappa both will be there actually. Now um, here we have written that lambda and, lambda and kappa chain will be there. Okay. So there is another thing they are saying. Primary amyloidosis, the AL type. One of the cause is the immuno, uh, this one, multiple myeloma. Okay. Did you understand that multiple myeloma can lead to amyloidosis, the AL type? Then a lot of proteins are also, these proteins are excreted in urine. They are called as Benz-Johns proteins. We will come to the details of all this in uh, diagnosis. For now, these are the consequences, some of the consequences of multiple myeloma. <coughs> More consequences are there. Look at the clinical features of multiple myeloma. Usually it affects the elderly. There will be pathological fractures, chronic pain. There will be renal dysfunction. Polyuria will be there. There is a lot of urine going and uh, renal dysfunction. Neurologic manifestations also can be there. Confusion, weakness, etc. Shall we move on? Now coming to the gross. What exactly will you see in the gross in multiple myeloma? Now basically there are osseous lesions. There are bone marrow lesions. Like um, we already told you, the bones with red marrow like skull, spine, ribs, pelvis and then the long bones of limbs are affected. The lesions usually will be in the medullary cavity, right? In the marrow, in the medullary cavity. Then they will start eroding the cancellous bones and they will cause destruction of the bone cortex also, right? From the center, it's going outward, you can understand. That's why there will be, the bone becomes, uh, there will be osteoporosis and hence there will be pathologic fractures. Now, <coughs> the normal bone marrow goes on getting replaced with some tumor cells. In the radiology, you will be able to see punched out lesions. You should say punched out lesions. Like here you can see 1 to 2 centimeter size defects. Punched out lesions will be there. Moving on. Now microscopy, multiple myeloma, the microscopy look at in the bone. Okay, we are still talking about the bone. Now here in the bone marrow picture what you can see is this is a myeloid cell, this is a myeloid cell. These all will grow on to become a neutrophil. But these are plasma cells, so many plasma cells of different sizes, right? So many plasma cells you can see. And this one actually has two, two nucle nucleus. There is a prominent nucleola you can see. And the cytoplasm has vacuoles. So cytoplasmic vacuoles are there in these plasma cells. Also, uh, these plasma cells are making so many uh, immunoglobulins that there can be Russell bodies also. Okay, we have not drawn that here actually. Russell bodies also will be there. Now try to understand what is being said here. In the bone marrow picture, how will you get a bone marrow picture? You take a bone marrow aspirate. How do you take bone marrow aspirate? You know how to take bone marrow aspirate guys? I think usually they take from pelvis etc. So the pelvic bone etc, the hip bone right, they will try to take the bone marrow. And uh, usually when you examine it, it will be hypercellular. Obviously, it's a cancer, right? Lot of cells will be there. Hypercellular, it will be. Myeloma cells will be greater than 10% of the marrow cellularity. This is something important, I think, slightly. You have to know this. So the number of cells, uh, the myeloma cells will be greater than or equal to 10% of ma marrow cellularity. Now, these cells, uh, they can be in clumps or sheets or they may be scattered. They vary in size. We already told you they vary in size. They can be binucleate, multinucleate also. They can be present at times. The nucleus is eccentric, right? The, the nucleuses are eccentric. You see the nucleus are eccentric. There is no cartwheel chromatin. Okay. The nuclei, uh, they didn't say prominent, but they are present. Obviously, they will be present. Cytoplasm uh, is abundant, you can see. And cytoplasm is basophilic. We have drawn basophilic cytoplasm here. And uh, there is perinuclear halo vacuolization. Russell bodies also will be there. Now, <coughs> They have immunoglobulins, right? Hold on. Now just pay attention here to this point. Myeloma cells greater than or equal to 10% marrow cellularity because if it is less than this, no, and myeloma cells are more, that can happen in many cases like systemic lupus, erythematosis, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, aplastic anemia, cirrhosis of liver, metastatic cancer, chronic inflammation, infection such as tuberculosis. In all those, the cellularity will be more but less than 10%. Okay. So, 
you can just write here if less than 10 percent it can be aplastic anemia rheumatoid arthritis sle cirrhosis of liver metastatic cancer chronic inflammation and infection such as tb okay so you understood why this 10 percent rule is important correct very good now let's move on then a perinuclear halo in the plasma cell russell bodies vacuoles in the cytoplasm all that you have to explain okay now let us go on to extra osseous lesion what will it affect other than the bone so extra osseous lesions will be there like blood is affected obviously blood is affected right because whatever the bone marrow makes it will currently it will finally spill over to blood only so blood also you can see some changes kidney it's called as myeloma kidney we look at the features neuropathy like we told you it will affect uh, the uh, nerves etc systemic amyloidosis we said that amyloidosis can happen because of lot of uh, light chain uh, proteins and liver and spleen also can get involved so let us look at blood first so what and all uh, have we seen and uh, what are we seeing now guys so in multiple myeloma we have seen osseous lesions bone marrow picture from the bone marrow aspirate now we are moving on to blood and seeing what has happened in blood in blood what happens these uh, plasma cells usually are present in blood also but here there will be atypical plasma cells right so there will be atypical plasma cells in blood then there will be anemia but the anemia here will be normocytic normochromic anemia then the red cells will have rolex formation when you observe the peripheral smear you will see rolex formation that means the rbc's are clumping together there is hyperviscosity of blood obviously hyperviscosity of blood because there are too many cells correct so there will be elevated esr also that's pretty understood if you didn't understand then i'm not sure see blood blood is more thick so elevated esr the rbc's are clumping together rolex formation now let's move on to the kidney guys myeloma kidney now in myeloma kidney what happens renal involvement in myeloma uh, called myeloma nephrosis can occur okay so the main mechanism of myeloma kidney is in is the filtration of light chain proteins the benstone proteins which are getting filtered right they get precipitated in the, the they get precipitated in the distal convoluted tubules the dcts so <coughs> uh, the casts may be surrounded by giant cells okay so just remember that uh, benz johns proteins benz john proteins are going to precipitate in distal convoluted tubule right so some casts and all will be there so that is uh, going to result in myeloma kidney kidney is going to going to dysfunction then coming to neuropathy so it will affect the nerves so there will be sorry neuropathy yeah neuro nerve only right so non specific polyneuropathy neurologic complications not much explained there coming to systemic amyloidosis here um, amyloidosis we already told you al amyloidosis will be there and multiple organs will get involved the organs will be heart bubble skin nerves kidney see we have already finished kidney nerves we have finished so bubble skin heart probably you need to know heart bubble skin all, all these organs can get involved the liver also a spleen also get involved there can be hepatomegaly splenomegaly So can you now summarize the extra osseous lesions in uh, multiple myeloma extra osseous so the kidney is affected 
the liver and spleen hepatomegaly splenomegaly then the nerves are affected then amyloidosis will be there blood is affected there will be anemia which is normocytic normochromic then atypical uh, plasma cells will be there blood will be hyperviscous <coughs> rolex formation of rbcs there is elevated esr where will you see elevated esr multiple myeloma a lot of other cases also one of the case you can remember so now let's move on so diagnosis we already covered a lot of diagnosis actually just look at the other things now uh, we saw that in the marrow the plasma cytosis will be there the, there will be a lot of plasma cells more than 10 percent equal to equal or more than 10 percent right now in the radiologic you will see that there are lytic bone lesions punched out lesions one to two centimeter correct tumor markers what are the tumor markers for uh, multiple myeloma you have immunoglobulins and benzstrons proteins let us see how we will identify these immunoglobulins actually this is the serum electrophoresis so in the blood in the blood you can see that albumin alpha 1 uh, globulins alpha 2 globulins beta globulins only right so gamma this is how normally it looks but here you can see an m band there is an increase in the gamma globulins correct this is serum electrophoresis this is the m band so basically there are uh, three features in multiple myeloma the three features are actually marrow plasmocytosis, radiologic evidence of lytic bones and uh, M band, right? M band is nothing but, hold on. So this is the triad, marrow plasma cytosis, radiologic evidence and M band. M band will be in urine, serum, wherever you want. You can say this is the serum electrophoresis showing the M band. M band if it is not there then at least the other two uh, can be there okay M band in only in secretory it will be there only in secretory type it will be there okay then uh, this is the serum electrophoresis draw this diagram to get more marks then coming to Benz-Jones proteins the tumor markers are specific proteins like immunoglobulins and Benz-Jones proteins. Benz-Jones proteins in the urine how you will detect this. Now urine analysis you know how to do protein analysis correct. So you will do the uh, acetic acid something and all that right precipitation heat precipitation correct. So this Benz-Jones proteins when you heat actually at 60 degrees centigrade it will uh, precipitate the Benz-Jones proteins will precipitate. But if you continue to heat further the proteins will dissolve. So are you understanding? So Benz-Jones proteins exactly at 60 degrees centigrade, 45 to 60 degrees centigrade, this Benz-Jones protein will precipitate. In no other temperature it will precipitate. Above this also it will dissolve, below this also it will dissolve. So that is a characteristic feature of Benz-Jones protein. So a lower than this temperature also it will um, dissolve, higher than the, this temperature also it will dissolve. So you can say 45 to 60 degrees centigrade it precipitates. One more thing you can write here is uh, if the serum has more proteins it could be many other disorders also okay like uh, CLL chronic lymphocytic leukemia lot of things like that like uh, <coughs> light chain disease heavy chain disease so a lot of things guys hope you have understood so far whatever we have taught what did we teach till now multiple myeloma diagnosis kind of thing we saw now let's move on to the last slide here Something like myeloma, 1% cases of myeloma will have poems. Poems is polynephropathy, organomegaly, endocrinopathy, multiple myeloma, skin changes. So myeloma, 1% cases will have multiple myeloma. Wow. If you understood something, then that's great. We have finished this uh, multiple myeloma topic. Very important for exam. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.